Hey everybody, we are teaching Gravity Sketch. This Gravity Sketch is about looking at the main settings and controls for Gravity Sketch itself. Now there are a whole lot of these guys and we'll actually have separate lessons to go into the real details. This one is just an overview of where they are and what they do. So if you are not gripping something with your main hand, if you're gripping something, it'll be an edit tool. But if you're not gripping, your offhand blue button will have three lines. And that blue button brings up the options menus and the settings menu. As you can see, there's a whole lot of them. So we're going to go through these guys and what they do. I've got my blue pyramid back here just as an example if we need it. So when I bring up this menu, I've got main options down the side. Some of those options might have subcategories across the top. So I'm just going to go down the side of these main options and what they do. So if you need certain tools, you'll have an idea of where to go. The first one on the top, that square object, that is an extinct being that was once known as a floppy disk. They used to roam in herds of thousands, but they don't actually exist anymore. And yet we still use it to represent saving your work. This will be a list of your projects. You can save projects, load projects. You can even take screenshots, pictures of the object, so you can keep track of which one it is. Set a good preference on what that image is going to look like. It's also got options for saving it online, of saving it locally, that type of stuff save as the first options on your menu. The second one is the actual settings, and they use a gear symbol just like a lot of software does. This is the one that's broken into subsections across the top. So as you can see from the black outline, we're going to start in the settings menu in the sketching aid first subsection. Sketching aid tools are stuff that are helping you actually when you're drawing and manipulating ob uh, models and objects. It's got things like locking everything vertically for easy of keeping things aligned and manipulating. It's got ways of getting back to the home, controlling the mirror, that type of stuff. Actual in-process adjustments and aids to help you work more easily. The second section is for personal preferences. This will include things like your right hand, left hand control. This has things like how smooth do you want it to make the objects. So if you're working on a low power machine like a Quest, it's got ways to turn down the quality temporarily to help your machine work a little better as you get more complicated objects. So the actual program preferences are the second section in your settings. The third section controls your actual environment, your workspace. I'm in the warehouse workspace, which is the third of the workspaces. It also has an empty white room, an empty black room. It's got more of a gray studio. It's hard to tell on the screen, but I've got more of a amorphous shapes of light and dark around me. But this also has things like our light source. So as you can see, as I move the light around, it changes the way my model looks, depending on which scene you're in. We'll discuss scenes and even creating your own custom environment as part of a separate lesson. I'm just going to go back to our warehouse for now. So that is the third subsection of settings. The final section is called beta, and this has tools that are still in progress, so they may or may not work the way you expect them to. The beta tools are sort of a preview of what they're working on. The developers do appreciate feedback, so you can contact them through their website and through their Discord and that kind of stuff if you've got suggestions or bug reports, that type of thing. Beta is an idea of what they're working on, and you can try them out but there's no guarantee they'll work perfectly. Those are the four subsections of settings. So choose settings and then touch the subsection you want to control. Save, settings. The third one, images. 
I can bring in pictures and photographs into the studio so I can use them as I create my objects. So if I'm trying to copy a spaceship, I could bring in that spaceship as a picture and then manipulate it, use it as a reference for what I'm creating. I can place it around as pictures. Those references won't be part of your actual model. They're just in here so that you can use them to see what they look like. There are actually folders on your system, including the Quest, that lets you put these in. Likewise, you can go on the internet to save them as part of your internet account. This is also a way we'll get into textures if you want pictures as part of the model, but that's, that's in an episode all of its own. Reference images are where you're going to find these pictures and reference these pictures. Now I can actually bring this, whoops, bring this right into play and use it as a picture while I'm working on my object. It's just like any other object in uh, uh, Gravity Sketch. We'll look at that in its own lesson. The fourth item are for models. Not only can we bring in pictures, but I can actually bring in little models and shapes like mannequins and cars. Anything you actually create in another program like Blender and things can be imported and brought into our system in Gravity Sketch. Our settings fourth option, not only does it have these prefabricated ones, but here's where we're going to go to import from there as well. The fifth option is called layers. Now layers are a very powerful tool. I could build an object and keep it all one piece and manipulate it and work with it as if it's one piece. But a complicated object, I might want to build as separate objects and yet still play with them together. So an example, if I'm making a car, I could use layers so I could have the chassis and wheels as one piece, the engine is dr and drivetrain as a separate layer so I can hide it or work on it or see how it uh, affects the other pieces while keeping it almost like a separate model within this one environment. I'll then add a third layer for the shell and interior. So I'm building up my one car model, but using layers to keep track of components as if they were entirely separate pieces. We'll get into that in its own lesson in a lot of detail, because it's going to take a lot of detail. The f uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Option number six, orthographic viewpoint. Watch my pyramid. When I choose this option, here is my pyramid from top bottom, and all four sides. This is especially helpful if I'm doing something like a car or a shoe, and I actually want to see it dead on flat, front, top, side, and bottom. I can even use this to manipulate and work with the object itself and then uh, know how it's going to fit together. So these orthographic views, now you can see here is my model from all sides. If I change this piece, you can see how working with this view is going to keep it helpful and, and useful uh, for perspective on the piece I'm working in. I can combine this with the reference images to make sure the pieces line up from the different angles the way I expect them to. Too many pyramids. The very bottom of these settings that's supposed to be a mortar board, like from graduation. That is actually going to take you to lessons and tutorials and examples on how to use Gravity Sketch. It's actually broken down into categories, and each category is going to have its own sets of lessons to watch. These are standard videos. Watch them as you will. But this is a good way to get a grip on how some of these pieces work. Don't just trust one person's videos. Get as much information as you can from as many different sources as you can. You will learn tips and tricks from one person that another person didn't know. Hopefully this has been a good overview for what these pieces are. It's the accessible from your blue trigger button giving you the different main controls for your uh, gravity sketch. These aren't the model itself, but your environment. Whether you're saving, 
getting your settings and preferences, bringing in references images, bringing in actual models into it, breaking your piece into sections or layers, or getting that orthographic viewpoint so you can see how your model looks from the main primary cardinal directions. We'll go into all of those in excessive detail over time, but this is an overview for anybody who's never used Gravity Sketch to really get a grip on where things are and what they're going to be used for. Hopefully this has been helpful for you and gives you some ideas of things you can try yourself. I'm going to switch back to my usual ink here stroke so I can give you our subscription message, because every good YouTube channel needs a good subscription message. We do this all the time on youtube.com slash shameless mayhem. Let us know in the comments if you have questions or if there are particular lessons you'd like us to cover. That's how we get you the information you need. So have fun with Gravity Sketch, everybody.